almost ready. <laughs> All right. Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about why you are not what's broken about the world. Okay? So this is clearly the theme of this Perception Trainers channel. Um, but I sort of want to look at it again from a slightly different perspective today. Um, a little bit more of a direct perspective, perhaps. In the, um, in the way of talking about why we're so kind of addicted to self-help and self-improvement and spirituality work and all of these things, and why being so focused on fixing ourselves and changing ourselves and making ourselves different while a part of the path, while being something that has value, while being something that has purpose, when we overdo it and when we take it out of the context of a society that's not working for us, of culture that's not working for us, of, of taking it out of the context of being like, being able to understand the difference between the pain that's coming from lack of discipline in ourselves or lack of walking a path that works for us or lack of doing something that's right for us in our lives versus the pain of living in a world or trying to live up to expectation or trying to live up to society's societal standards that are harmful, that are painful, that don't work, and rather than seeing, hey, this thing that I'm pursuing that I've been trained and told to pursue my whole life, this thing that I'm trying to align with, this thing that I'm trying to become, this thing that I'm trying to be, this thing that I'm trying to improve myself into, is the thing that hurts, is the thing that doesn't work, is the thing that is out of alignment versus constantly feeling that there's something wrong with us, something flawed in us, something that needs to be fixed in us before we're going to be able to be happy, okay? So again, I know that we live in this world and especially, like I say, in the self-help and the self-love, in the personal growth, in the spirituality realms where we're told over and over and over and over and over again, essentially, that on some level, our pain and our struggle and our suffering is our fault or it's fully and completely a choice we're making or a choice we've made and we can fix it via whatever modality is being sold, right? This, the meditation retreat, the spirituality thing, the whatever it is that we're being told, this, the self-improvement, the personal growth, the success coaching, the relationship coaching, the health coaching, the whatever, the here it is, you can change it, you can fix it, and you can bring your life into pure bliss if you just change the thing that's broken about you that's holding you back from having that bliss, right? And that is essentially the message behind pretty much all spirituality, self-love, self-improvement doctrines that I see. It's essentially this very well-meaning and usually innocent attempt at taking responsibility, taking ownership for our pain, taking re responsibility for our pain, taking control of the pain, making it something that we're doing wrong, something that's flawed in us, something that's bad about us. Because if we do that, and when we do that, when we convince ourselves that our pain is coming from some shortcoming, some flaw, some something missing, some lack of discipline, some lack of whatever in us, and if we can just fix that, we'll be happy, right? We want to believe that we can self-improve spirituality, self-help, any pain, any struggle, any suffering out of our lives. Because of course, right? If it's all coming down to, if I just take responsibility for it, if I just find the reason 
why it's my fault that it's happening if I just find the reason why I created it or I chose it or I manifested it or it's something flawed inside of me. I have complete control then over making the pain stop, right? So again, remember, we're pretty much all coming to our spirituality, our self-help, our self-improvement, our personal growth, because we're in pain on some level, right? Most of us aren't like, life is going amazing, everything feels great, all things, like everything is firing on all cylinders, I feel satisfied, I feel fulfilled, I feel amazing, life is going amazing, I think I'm gonna go to a Tony Robbins retreat. Right? Like most of us aren't doing that. <laughs> most of us aren't like, I'm going to dedicate myself to a three hour meditation and Kundalini breath work, um, juice fast for 70 days because I feel awesome. Right? Like, really? Like, at the end of the day, we're all coming to these practices, we're all doing these things because we're in pain and we want to get out of pain. Right? And then we want on some level to hear from our gurus and our teachers and our spiritual texts that our pain on some level, on most levels, is our fault, right? And, and most self-help and self-improvement spirituality people don't frame it like that. They don't frame it, it's your fault. They frame it, it's your ego, it's your desire. It's your lack of emotional control. It's your lack of discipline. It's your flawed nature. It's your, even nowadays, it's your childhood trauma. It's your whatever, whatever. It's your lack of capacity to focus. It's your lack of capacity to follow through. It's your lack of willpower. It's your lack of taking responsibility for yourself. Everything is possible and all dreams are possible and everything you want for yourself, all the financial success, all the health success, all the accolades and praise and uh, consensus reality approval you want, all of these things, the meaning and purpose and drive and feeling like you know who you are and what you want, that's all 100% possible within our reality for all people. That's what they tell you. And if you just take responsibility enough for all the parts of yourself and all the areas of your life that aren't that, you will realize on some level it all comes down to you just not making the right choices, not doing the right things. And if you just do the right things and make the right choices, you'll have permanent bliss. You'll achieve whatever you want. And you know what you want, okay, right? That's the other big number one assumption. They're always telling you, you already know what you want. Right? That financial success you want, that relationship success you want, that physical health thing you want, that, that's correct. There's, there could be no shadow, no consensus reality, no part of that that isn't who you really are. There's no questioning of the goals. If the goals align with consensus reality approval, and remember, even spirituality, which can seem so counterculture, isn't most of the time, right? So many spiritual doctrines tell us we're not spiritual until we're fully transcended all of our emotions. Yes, we've lost the thread completely of what we want, 100%, right? Spirituality tells us you're not really spiritual until you're completely emotionally poised at all times, until you're totally self-sacrificing till you're even keel, everything is neutral, you have no emotional outbursts, you have no pain, you have no thought of yourself. What? Right, like that's pure consensus reality bullshit. That's turning yourself into a robot. Like until you are literally a machine who's completely able to be present and emotionally stable and productive all the time. You're not spiritual. Ha, what? 
Like literally the idea that you're supposed to become not a human in order to become a spiritual person. Let's think about that for a second. Okay, so I just got I just had a moment with myself right before coming on deeply feeling how I personally have lost the thread. Exactly. Right? We have been so indoctrinated that culture is correct to the point where literally everywhere we go, you want to look at the spiritual boss babes, they're telling you the same shit. Right? You're supposed to hustle, you're supposed to drive, you're supposed to be financially successful and blissed out all the time and beautiful and everything's supposed to be pink and sparkly. You go to the Buddhists, the Zen Buddhists, who tell you you're not supposed to have desire, you're not supposed to have human emotions, you're supposed to be in the present moment at all times. We go to the self-help guru, Tony Robbins, he tells you, you know, fix your broken willpower, just do it, rah, rah, rah get incredibly masculine or incredibly feminine, polarize. You go to Joe Dispenza, he tells you your brain is broken. You just need to positive think your way into everything you want. It's the placebo effect. There's never anything actually wrong with your body. There's never anything actually wrong. It's all just your perception. And you should be able to live in this world and be happy. And if you're not, there's something broken, wrong, and bad about you. And here's the plethora, the millions of programs that you can take to fix whatever your specific thing aligns with. Yeah, that makes sense that that's the broken thing about me. Right? Whether you're attracted to the Boss Babe or the Tony Robbins or the Eckhart Tolle or the Kate, Byron Katie, whatever. It's all the same message at the end of the day. Your pain is because of you. And when you fix it, right? When you fix it, you'll be able to be successful in the system. That's the promise. We can think all we want, but the body perceives what, what we feel. Exactly, 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 right? All of the programs still say at the end of the day, if you've done it right, when you've done it right, you will be a good machine. Right? The ultimate goal. You'll lose yourself. You'll have no more emotions. You'll have no more ego. And when you've lost all that, you'll be perfectly emotionally poised, able to just handle whatever life hands to you. You never have a meltdown. You never feel sad again. And you're always just this, like, completely in alignment with reality, allowing for whatever is to happen all the time, and you have no agency, essentially. Or you're, the agency that you have is, like, that you'll be happy with everything. And, and and I know that again, like I know that some teachings can can get a little bit more nuanced than that, and that they can they can say like, well, then you're gonna make good choices, and you're gonna have clear sight, and you're gonna know what's good for you, and you're gonna know all these things. But again, there's never any questioning. There's never any questioning of the foundation of like why are we all so miserable. Why is it that all of us need so much seeming help to succeed in this system? Um, so Misha says, I think this is the dominant narrative that has presented itself because it absolutely absolves us of the responsibility anyway. And I think it's the other way around. Like I really think that it's it it makes us feel like again. It's not the system that's broken. It's not consensus that's broken. It's not the whole what we've been trained we have to do and be and become in order to fit in and survive and feel good and feel safe. Because remember that. This is the real bottom line of this. We are, for better or for worse, beings that evolved in community. 
right? For pretty much all of human history, being a part of a group was survival. Getting kicked out of the group meant death. Having to survive on your own, having to be independent was essentially a death sentence. In our childhoods, not being able to, yes, exactly. If it comes down to if we could just do it right, we wouldn't be in so much pain. Exactly this, right? We're trying to take complete responsibility. We're trying to say everything I've been taught is correct. I don't have to question the narrative. I don't have to question what I want. I don't have to question what I've been told I have to be. And more than that, I don't have to question what I believe I have to become in order to be accepted. I don't have to look at myself and say, is it that I'm failing at this job because I'm not trying hard enough and I'm not doing good enough and blah, 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 blah. Or is it because I really am never going to be successful at this job? And then that means, right, I'm going to be rejected. I'm not going to be understood. My family's going to abandon me. My friends are going to abandon me. And then I'm going to be alone. This is the big thing. When we make every part of our pain our fault, and when we tell ourselves these stories and we're told these stories that when we do the spiritual self-help, self-improvement work enough, we will become these people who are generally speaking what society expects and accepts. That is the promise of all self-help, all spirituality, all personal growth you will become societally ex acceptable. You will become emotionally poisoned, everyone will like you. You will become strong and successful and alpha and everyone will worship you. You will become a boss babe who's helping everyone and live in your purpose and blah, blah, blah. It, no one's ever selling. And then you're gonna become a human who some people are gonna like and some people aren't. And you're gonna realize that maybe all of these things that you've been trained, you're supposed to like, you're supposed to pursue, you're supposed to want, what success actually is, all these things that would get culture to embrace you and accept you and praise you are actually harmful to who you are. And you're gonna to have to accept that consensus reality is false. And part of the reason you're sabotaging yourself and coping and can't get your shit together is because your body that cannot be conditioned is rebelling from a system that's never gonna work, a system that hurts. You're coping with the pain of trying to fit in. You're coping with the pain of trying to live up to a cultural expectation that is anti-human life. No one ever says that. No one ever says some of the things you're going to have to let go of are not you, are not your emotions, right? My biggest message is if you're having an emotional reaction, that's in response to something. The, the goal should never be to stop having an emotional reaction. That's literally like saying my goal is to make it so that the next time I put my hand on a burner, it doesn't hurt. That's not what we want. We have literally turned the symptom into the bad guy that we're trying to fix it. And it's not helping us. It's not serving us. We are a culture who has now at this point said, putting our hand on the burner is what we want. <laughs> we want to be able to all be able to sit here with our hands on our burners and to be emotionally poised while we do it. And the pain that happens when we put our hand on the burner, that's the problem.
That's the thing we all have to fix about ourselves. The ways that we cope with the pain. The ways that we numb ourselves out. The ways that we cry out. The ways that we react and respond when our hand is on the burner and it hurts so, 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 so much. Those are the things that are wrong with us. And that's what we need to fix. And that's what our self-help and our self-improvement and our self-personal growth and our spirituality is all about. It almost all boils down to how can we fix the pain sensation so that you can be emotionally poised while you keep your hand on the burner. That's what I'm seeing. And the reality is, no. <laughs> The thing that's broken in this equation is not the pain. The pain is the one thing trying to save us from having our hand on the burner, which destroys our tissue. Because what happens when you leave your hand on the burning long enough? You send your hand completely off. And then you don't have a hand. And while your hand is on the burner, you don't have a hand. Right? This is what's happening. And everyone thinks that they're breaking themselves out of the matrix. Everyone thinks that they're rebelling from government or rebelling from this or rebelling from that. Or everyone thinks they, they see and they know what's going on and all this stuff. And I get it. Right? It's so confusing nowadays. Who actually knows what the matrix is? Who actually knows what's right and wrong? How do we even tell? And that is also something that I think, again, has gotten so confused, especially in the spiritual world. Right? Like, spiritual people are constantly telling you what the matrix is and what the real reality is versus the fake reality and who's lying to who and the government conspiracy and all of these things. And, and again, like, I'm not saying at all that any institution out there, government, religion, education, whatever, are, like, good and trustworthy and completely innocent and we should just like follow along like not at all obviously it is very clear that there is a lot of corruption everywhere there there is no question about that and i would never once ever try to insinuate that if you distrust the government or that if you distrust any institution that you're a conspiracy theorist i don't believe that it's not conspiracy it's pretty obvious it's pretty blatant we have absolute evidence of corruption and to just oppose the government for the sake of it to just oppose medicine for the sake of it to just oppose everything on face value is also not conscious right we need to be able to navigate each individual situation instead of having a blanket it's all corrupt or it's all trustworthy. It's never gonna be like that. Life is complex. People are complex. Everything that we face is going to be multifaceted. And we can't have a blanket, this is what this is and this is what's going on. If we really want to know what the truth is in any given situation. Because again, nothing is black and white. Nothing is always and never. Nothing is anything like that. We're, we're not consistent. Especially human beings, we're not consistent. We're not fluid, we're not consistent, we are completely hypocritical, sometimes doing things that are great for the humanity, sometimes doing things that are totally against humanity. There is no, this is how it is. But anyways, that's a side tangent. The main thing, again, is that we need to shift. from believing that our pain is what's wrong with us. We need to shift from believing that our mental pain, our emotional pain, our spiritual pain, our physical pain is a flaw that needs to be fixed. We need to shift from everywhere we're not able to align with consensus reality, thinking there's something broken about me that I can't make myself do it, into 
okay, what's actually going on here? Because, again, this indoctrination that we all have, that consensus reality is reality. Whatever your consensus reality is. And, and there isn't a consistent consensus reality. We all have a consensus reality that's a little bit different from everyone else, depending on where you were raised, depending on who you were raised around, depending on the culture you were raised in, depending on a lot of different things, right? There's obviously the, the kind of overarching theme of success and money and individuality um, becoming a good machine in the like overarching consensus. But then there's right Christian consensus reality. There's Muslim consensus reality. There's consensus reality in different cultures, different places on the planet. What is and isn't socially acceptable. There's different consensus realities within families, which within social groups, friend groups, within different career paths, right? The way you're allowed to dress, the way you're supposed to speak, the way you're supposed to act is very different if you're a lawyer working downtown New York City versus a spiritual guide living in Ubud. But you'll notice everywhere you go, there's a culture, there's a set of expectations that everyone is following along with. Everyone's kind of fitting into a type, into a mold, into a way. And then we have all these groups all around the world that fight with each other over what the right consensus reality is, over what the wrong consensus reality is. And we literally start wars over this stuff. We destroy each other over this stuff. We destroy the earth over this stuff. Right? Consensus reality is like everything to us because of that evolutionary biology thing that says fitting into the group, being a part of the group is safety. And when we all agree, we can create systems where we all agree and we're not fighting and then we get our needs met better. And when someone comes and tells us that how we're doing it isn't right, it destabilizes us. Because if what we're doing isn't correct, if what we're doing isn't right, that might mean we're vulnerable to pain and suffering and not getting our needs met. And we'd rather shoot the messenger. We want to get rid of the dissenter then believe that maybe what they're saying is true, right? We don't even look at results. We might all agree this is how we should do it. And yet we're hurting, we're failing, it's not going how we want. And someone comes along and says, well, hey, this is why it's not working. And we shoot the person who tells us this is why it's not working. Because again, we feel so insecure because the world is so chaotic. We want to believe that our perceptions of reality and our perceptions of what we should and should not do are correct. Because to us, that then means we're going to be protected from pain. We're doing things right. We have consensus agreement. We can all agree. We can all go with this, and then we're all going to get our needs met. Everyone in my group. Right? And so it's completely destabilizing and horrifying. This is why, like so many of us, we can't hear an opposing position to our own. We can't hear an opposing opinion. We can't even question the things that aren't working about what we're doing. Because it's like an existential threat to do that. And we can't, for the life of us, feel safe or secure or all right, veering out of consensus reality, whatever the consensus reality is that we were raised in or that we're completely 
in right now because that triggers our nervous system into feeling like we're going to die because being outside the group like i said historically and in our own lives in our childhoods meant death so this idea that we're going to realize things about ourselves that don't align with re with consensus reality that don't align with the culture we're in that don't align with who we were trained we had to be is so destabilizing because number one we then don't know what we are supposed to do most of the time when we really get in touch with our bodies and we really get in touch with our feelings and we really get in touch with the things that aren't working for us we don't learn first thing what we want or what would work for us or see the path of how to create that the first thing we see is all the things that are hurting and not working and that aren't ever going to work and all the stuff we're going to lose and this is why we're all so addicted to these like spiritual things where we're going to learn who we really are and we're going to discover our true path and we're going to discover our real selves and we're going to discover 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 because none of us want to have to sit in or go through the period of shedding which is the actual first thing that happens when we're really starting to connect with our true selves and our pain and what reality is we're going to first go through a period of oh my gosh these are all the things that don't work these are all the things that aren't going to be me these are all the things i have to let go of like in my personal journey the first several years of my adulthood was just getting rid of stuff like literally physically mentally emotionally spiritually i didn't know what i wanted i just knew a whole bunch of things that i didn't want i didn't know who i was but there was a lot of learning what i wasn't there was a lot of trying stuff and being like, nope, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. I can't do that. That doesn't work. That is super painful. That's terrible. I can't understand how people are even doing this. I have to cope really bad when I do that. I have to numb really bad while I'm doing that. Right? And I was just like everyone else. Trying to fix the parts of me that had to cope and numb and, and self-sabotage in order to get through life. Until I finally was like, okay, well, why am I doing this? Why do I have to cope so much? Why do I have to self-sabotage? And it was like, yeah, no, this system doesn't work. And I started to realize, right, the system of consumption and overproduction and slave labor that still exists and the systems that are completely rigged for the success of a very small minority of people at the expense of a very large majority of people and all of these things started to just be like i can't participate in these systems i can't be a part of this i can't be a part of fashion i can't be watching all the tv shows i can't i can't be hyper successful I can't be hyper productive. I can't be burning myself out being the spiritual whatever, whatever, right? Like there, there were so many things that I was like, these were all the expectations placed upon me. These were all the, if you achieve these things, you will be happy messages that I got. Even surrendering to the idea that I was chronically ill and that it wasn't my fault. And I wasn't going to fix my body. I was going to learn how to nourish and support my body. It was a huge shift of letting go, of con continually choosing the next diet and the next program and the next guru and the next teacher and the what's going to be the thing that heals me. And to just, okay, what, what can I do right now?
to just support the body that exists right now that might always be sick? How can I best support the body that exists right now? How can I best support the emotional me that exists right now? How can I best support the mental state I'm in right now? And that generated a lot of progress and process and changed my life completely. But this being the point, I stopped trying to fix myself. And in that, I checked out of a lot of systems. And like I said, the first step, the first phase for a long time wasn't clarity on what I wanted or who I was or what was right for me. The first phase was a lot, a lot, a lot of just seeing how messed up things were, seeing the things that I didn't want to participate in, seeing the things that weren't ever going to work for me, being horrified, because like this is the other thing. This is the, this is the myth of ego death, the actual thing that I believe is real about, real ego death. The losing who I thought I was going to become when I finally did all the self-help and self-love and personal growth and personal improvement stuff. Correct. Losing the hope and the dream that I was ever going to be this lovable, charismatic, whatever, whatever I was conditioned person who everybody loved. Realizing I was never going to have that. I was never going to be that. I didn't know what I was going to have. And there was literally absolute times where I was like, I might not survive or I might be alone forever. I might become who I really am and discover that just actually nobody likes that. And that was a very real possibility for me because growing up, nobody liked me. I was not a popular gal. The idea that there were never going to be people who loved me, which was literally a thing that was said to my face by caregivers, you're lucky you have me because no one's ever going to love you. The very real possibility that I was going to become who I really am and that no one was going to like that and I was going to be kicked out of the group permanently. I was never going to be a success. I was never going to be the thing. Was always there. And that was that was a part of the journey I had to embrace and walk and say, you know what, even if that is true, I can't keep doing what I'm doing. I can't keep trying to fit in. I can't keep doing the thing. I can't keep trying to fix myself. This isn't working. It's not me that's just lacking discipline. Because like I said, I've talked about this in my last video, right? I didn't lack discipline. I was really good at the self-help and self-improvement. For a little while there, I don't think anyone ever has gone harder on that shit than me. And I was good at it. I could stick to it. I could get on the meditation thing and just do it. I could do this, the affirmations. I could do, I could do, I could push through. I learned to push through pain really early. And to just show up and to just do it and to just get through it. It wasn't even that I was failing at it. It was that I was succeeding. I was doing it right. And I was like, this fucking sucks. <laughs> this is not what I want. I'm doing it right. And it's horrible. <laughs> I'm not happy. I'm not more peaceful. I'm checking into things that I'm seeing are really harmful systems like right i sabotage myself at work i sabotage myself in all these places where i could have had success because i was like this is completely unintegral this is going to cause harm this isn't going to work so again the point being when we really get honest with ourselves 
and we really start connecting with our feelings and our emotions. Most of us are going to discover that we're in pain and we're coping and we're self-sabotaging. Because who we think we're supposed to become and what we think we're supposed to do in order to be successful, happy, healthy, in, acceptable, is painful. That there's the part of us that feels good doing it because we get that hit of consensus reality pleasure. We get that hit of that promise that if I do this and if I become this, I will be happy, I will be free, everything will work out for me. That's followed by that pain, the physical, mental, emotional pain that we then have to cope, we numb, we self-sabotage, and we scapegoat and we sabotage ourselves over and over and over again, thinking we're weak, we're lazy, we're stupid, whatever we think about ourselves. We're broken because it was working, the diet was working, the self-love path was working, I was manifesting and positivity in my way and I was having all these great days and having all these results and stimulating my nervous system and everything was great and then I fell off and I don't know why but it's because of me. Instead of no, you fell off because you at best overstimulated and overactivated your nervous system at the beginning of your self-improvement thing and you felt high from the anxiety or from the promise of I'm finally free, right? If I just do the Byron Katie work enough, I take enough responsibility, I just have gratitude and see the good in absolutely everything, I'm going to be free of all my pain. And I'm not saying there's no benefit in that. Okay? There's absolutely benefit in seeing the positive in things. Yes. Okay? Now, before we get all black and white on this, I'm going to say this. This doesn't mean, I'm not saying, that we don't have control. I'm not saying that there aren't things we can take responsibility for in our lives. I am not saying that changing our mindsets or changing our way of being or doing something that requires discipline for a while are never part of the path. That's not true. The self-love path includes these things, but they include them in times and places and in ways that are totally different from the self-improvement path. Okay? So this is number one. We start to connect with our emotions and our feelings and all these things and we're going to realize, holy shit, these are all the things that are harmful. These are all, like, I believe we're all capable of seeing through the matrix. And no one has to tell us. We can tell when we buy something, I truly believe when you tune into yourself, you're going to be like, mm, this isn't, this isn't good. There's something hinky in this. When we watch a TV show and it's, we're, we're, you can tell, like, I just really believe that again, you aren't going to have to be told the things that are harmful versus the things that are just what we need to be doing right now and part of it and maybe not the most ideal, but it, when you really start to tune in, you're going to know more and more and more. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel good. And then yes, go get educated by people, right? There are people who are experts on systemic issues and systemic injustice and the history of this and the history of that and health and all these things. But do it from this understanding that like you didn't create the system. If you're participating in it, you were indoctrinated into it. You're not willfully choosing to cause harm. You were never willfully choosing to cause harm. When you learn that something that you're participating in is causing harm, you have to have compassion for yourself. Because if you had known at the very beginning of your life and you had been presented with an equal and opposite choice, you are going to be loved and accepted and provided for no matter what you do. This path causes harm to others. This path does not. Which do you choose? You always would have chosen the path that doesn't cause harm. But none of us were offered that. The reason 
any of us participate in harmful systems is because we weren't offered an alternative. We grew up in a system where that was the way of things and participating in that system was vital for your survival. You had to do it because you had to fit in as a child. And then that, that got programmed into your nervous system as the right way to be and the right thing to do because it got you safety, it got you acceptance, and now you're an adult being told you have to be different. And as much as your intellect wants to, your body's going to be afraid. Because that means you have to then do different things than what you were raised to do. And that got programmed into your nervous system as how you stay safe. So we have compassion for ourselves, we're nice to ourselves, we realize we weren't given a choice, we were programmed to live the way we were living, and now as adults, we can slowly shift ourselves to the new behaviors and the new ways of being that align with real reality, that might get us rejected, that might get us misunderstood, that might get our community not agreeing with us, that mean we have to change, but we do it from a place of compassion and we do it from a place of grace for ourselves and the world around us. Not, this is a broken, shitty thing about me. It's, this is a completely innocent thing I was trained to do. And my nervous system is scared to change because change means I might get kicked out of the tribe. So of course I'm gonna have resistance. Of course I'm gonna have fear. There's nothing wrong with me. I didn't choose this. And now that I'm an adult and I can make different choices, I'm gonna be compassionate with myself and make different choices with love and compassion. This is why I'm saying, this doesn't mean, the self-love path is not, I'm just perfect. I never have to change, everything's great. Not at all. We learn to make shifts and changes based on being able to feel when something is out of alignment. Something is painful, something's not working. And rather than immediately turning it in and trying to fix ourselves so that we don't feel that pain anymore, we investigate, where is the pain actually coming from? Where's the system? What's the program? What's the thing? What's the story I'm telling myself? So that's what I'm saying. It's not that we don't do thought work. It's not that we don't look for the positive in things. It's not that we don't do these things. It's we do them in balance. Sometimes the thing that needs to shift is our perception, right? We're telling ourselves a story, I should be this, I should be that, I have to be this, I have to be that, and the only thing that needs to change is not what we're doing, not how we're being. It's our story we have around what we're doing and how we're being. That if we can make it okay, we can make it safe, all of a sudden we realize, oh, this is enough. I don't have to push myself more. I don't have to become more. Or, I really want this thing. If, I can, if I'm settled and I feel like I'm enough and I feel like I love myself no matter what and I still want it, I'm going to go for it. But I'm going to go for it from a place of not, it will make me worthy when I get it. We go for it from a place of like, this is just something that matters to me. I value this. I want to go on the journey. I want to change. I want to grow into that. Not because I'm shitty now, but because I'm a human who has things I want to grow into and things I want to become and things I want to discover as a thing that's alive, right? And, and we question our thoughts and we question our narratives and we question our perceptions. We do all these things, but again, not from the place of saying the pain that I'm in is wrong and bad and I have to fix it so that I can be stable and good in, in what I'm in. We really go in being like, okay, is this pain that I'm feeling a false perception? Or is it I'm trying to force myself to do a thing that I'm never going to be able to do without having pain because it's a hand on the burner thing? We go in, we have compassion for ourselves first. We love ourselves safe first. I'm good enough. I'm worthy. I'm safe with me. Even if I never change, even if I never fix this, even if I never get out of this pain, I'm still going to be here for me. I'm still going to love me. I'm still going to support me. I still feel like I'm worthy and valuable. 
even if everyone rejects me and I lose everyone and I lose everything, I'm still here for me. We start there. And then we say, okay, am I telling myself a story? Am I telling myself I have to be this way, otherwise this person's going to reject me, and if this person rejects me, okay, so maybe that whole thing is the narrative that needs to shift. Am I telling myself I have to become this way, and until I become like this, I'm not good enough? And maybe that's what needs to shift. Or is it I keep trying to make myself do this career, and I'm never going to be able to do it? I keep trying to become this kind of successful, and I can't. I keep trying to have this kind of relationship, and it's not going to work. I keep trying to be this kind of person and live this lifestyle, and it's not actually what I want. It's just what I've been trained to want. It's just what I've been told would, would make me happy if I had it. And right when we stop making it that I'm broken, that I'm in pain, or that I can't do it, our entire perspective shifts from what's wrong with me that I can't to what do I actually want? What's actually in alignment? Where does discipline need to be brought in? Because I do need to change, but not because I'm shitty now. Because I love myself and I want something different. Because the thing I was trained to believe is right hurts. It's not me. It's not me that's broken. It's this hurts because this doesn't work. And sometimes we have to trust ourselves first. We have to say, okay, I don't know why this thing that everyone else is doing and is seemingly having success at hurts so bad for me and I can't do it. And I don't know why. I don't actually know why it's harmful. I don't know why I can't do it. All I know is that my body physically will not let me do it. My emotions will not let me do it. I don't even need a reason. It's just I can't. And so we let it go and we make space for the not knowing because that's the big thing that no one ever seems to talk about is when you're doing this, there's going to be a lot of just sitting in letting stuff go, not having something to replace it with yet. Letting ourselves be emptied out, letting ourselves shed and shed and shed and shed and shed and not know and not have a thing to replace it. And eventually we keep making ourselves safe, we keep loving ourselves, we keep showing up for ourselves and doing whatever we need to do, right? Because again, we still live in the world, we still have to work jobs, we still have to interact with people, there's never going to be a time where we can just quit and Right? We, sometimes we're going to have to choose the lesser of two evils. That was my path too. I didn't, get, I didn't just like quit and like move to Bali and like lay in bed all day until I discovered what I wanted to do. There was no trust fund. I had to pay for myself. I had to support myself. There was no one else. I always had to work a job. I put myself through school while I was working a job. I made a lot of mistakes. I had to push myself when I physically shouldn't have. There were a lot of, a lot of times where it wasn't, I couldn't just listen to my body. I couldn't just quit. I couldn't just let it go, right? It was transition. It was seeing, okay, this isn't what I want. And then I took a couple of years to work towards getting to being able to actually live that out, right? Really being okay with, we're going to have to take steps and it's not going to be perfect. And we're not going to be able to just jump from this doesn't work for me, this so I can quit it and just sit and, sit and wait until I figure something else out. Sometimes we have to do the thing that doesn't work for us for a while as a bridge over to the other thing. So let's not black and white this. But again, we have to start with the foundation that your pain is not what's wrong with you. Your pain is not what's wrong with you and it is not a problem to be fixed. The pain is there telling you that something is out of alignment. What you believe to be true about yourself in reality isn't correct. 
Society does not have it all figured out. It's not completely evil. It's not completely wrong. There are going to be things you discover that you've been told your whole life by the spiritual community are wrong and bad and evil aren't. Totally aren't. Are completely normal and fine. The, the secular world has it figured out better. There are going to be things that you discover about the consensus reality that are like, whoa, no, totally not okay. Fast fashion can't do it. Like, there are going to be things. You're going to navigate each thing from an open-minded curiosity perspective, not having a blanket assumption on anything, because that's not being conscious. We don't write off all institutions. We don't write off any of these things. We don't take any spiritual teacher and say, everything they say is true. Everything they say is good. Don't question it. We question everything. Question everything. Deeply. And, and look for evidence in reality. Right? And that is hard in our social media age where we're presented with so many facts. But again, we do need to learn. And then, like I say, not everything that we feel, we know what that feeling means. So just because we get a feeling that a thing is bad doesn't necessarily actually mean that that's true, that the thing is bad. That can be our conditioning. That can be our trauma. That can be our programming that's telling us that thing is bad, not actual intuition, okay? That's completely possible. We have to be discerning with ourselves. We can't just go with any feeling and assume we already know what the feeling means. We have to question every feeling. Just as much as we question everything we're taking in from the outside world, we question everything from the inside world too. Is this indoctrination? Is this a, a belief that I've been building over time. Is this really true or is this a bias? What is my body actually feeling? Right? Really actually learning what our feelings are telling us is a deep work and we have to question what we think we're feeling. Not because we're broken. We keep working from trying to regulate our nervous systems, making ourselves as safe as possible with ourselves making ourselves as self-loving as possible. Because that's where all discovery and growth and transformation and change comes from. Where all awareness comes from. We start with safety first. So when we shift from I have to fix my broken self to I love and cherish and nurture and nourish and show up for who and what I am right now. What do I need right now? What am I feeling? Why am I feeling that way? Where did that feeling come from? What is this feeling actually trying to tell me? What needs to change? Me, my thoughts, my actions, is it society? It's complex. Each feeling will have more than one thing to share with us. So it's a continual showing up with compassion and curiosity, compassion and curiosity, compassion and curiosity, over and over and over again. You are not what's broken about this world. You are not what's broken about this world. You feel how you feel for a reason. You are valid. You are worthy of the self-exploration. You are worthy of the trying things and seeing how they go. You're worthy of whatever path you have to take. You're worthy of the steps. It's okay. There's no perfection in this, but you are not what's broken. Okay, so do we have any questions before I close? I hope this was helpful. But the main thing is, again, don't let the world convince you that your pain is the thing that's wrong with you. Your pain is the messenger. When you love yourself safe, you can start to investigate that messenger and it will help you discern this consensus reality thing is true. This is not. This is an alignment for me. This is not. I might lose everyone. It's okay. I'm going to try it anyways. I'm going to fail. It's okay. It's not. All of these things. 
It's a journey, it's a path, we continually are on it. There's no after. Okay? It's just a continual progression. And it does get joyful, and it is, we do want to look for the positive, and we do want to see the things that are working. It's not all pain. We don't want to be completely focused on the pain. That's why I say it's not about never positive thinking or never changing your thoughts. It's not about that. It's sometimes those things are useful. And when we start with, okay, I'm having compassion and love for myself. What do I need right now? Sometimes it'll be, I need an attitude adjustment. And we'll know that. Okay? It's not that anything is right or anything is wrong. It's time and place. And when does it help and when does it not? Okay? Okay. You're great. You're amazing. You're perfect. You are not what's wrong with this world. You are not what needs to be fixed. Show up for yourself. Be there for yourself. Your body and your emotions will guide you. But be careful to really investigate first. Whatever you're feeling, go in first. Look for the story first. Be willing to be wrong about what you think your emotions are telling you, what you think your feelings are telling you. If it's the same thing over and over, you might want to investigate. Okay? Learning to really feel what our feelings are telling us isn't as simple as just, I assume this is what it means and it must be right because it feels right. Investigate. If it feels heavy and negative, it's not true. But that doesn't mean that it's opposite is true. That doesn't mean everything you believe is true or everything you believe is false. We have to be ready and willing for the journey. So safety first. Safety, safety, safety. Try it out. See what happens. Okay? All right. I'll see you in the next video. Have a fabulous week. Be kind to yourself. You are not what's wrong with this world. Okay. Mwah.